What's going on YouTube? This is Boxing Wave and we are back. I'm just going to do a quick prediction video on this upcoming fight this weekend. This weekend, it's going to be on a Sunday, March 31st. It's going to be on a Sunday, so don't go looking for the fight Saturday night. It's not going to be there. Uh, Sunday night, on uh, if you're out in the UK, if you have Sky Sports, you'll be able to see this fight. If you're here in the States, you'll be able to watch the fight on Peacock. Re remember that Boxer has uh, a deal with uh, a broadcasting deal with Peacock. So if you have the app, the movie TV series app, check it out on there. Um, Fabio Wardley is going to be defending his European European title against uh, Fraser Clark. And I'm going to the fight. I'm going to fly out to London uh, Friday morning, and I'm going to be out there until over the weekend and see the fight, have a good time. Uh, you know, it's been like starting to become uh, an annual thing for me, you know. Um, I love going out there. You know, I love London. I have a good time every single time that I go. And um, I actually made a lot of friends out there now. So uh, I'm looking forward to the story behind me going to this fight, though, is because uh, Ben Ben Whitaker is going to be on the undercard. And, you know, like me and everybody else became a huge fan. Like I heard of him. I already seen him before that last fight. But uh, he's made a lot of fans because of that last performance. And my dad, who's had a recent birthday, I was going to go with him and take him to go see the fight because he, he wanted to see him. And I said, all right, let me look and see what his next fight was. And I saw he was on the other car. So I'm like, you know, I looked at some tickets and I'm like, all right, booked. Now I'm flying out there. You know, um, my dad is not coming with me, though. He couldn't make it. But I'll be out there. I'll be out there with my cousin. So I'll be flying out there. But look, I just wanted to give a quick prediction video. I'm not going to go super, super deep into this. Because Fabio Worley, one of the top up and coming contenders, in, in my opinion. You know, I've probably been watching him for like the last 10 fights or so. And, you know, I've been, you know, out of the UK, like up and coming, the British fighters that's on the come up. He's kind of been like one of my favorite guys out there, you know. And then um, you got Frazier Clark that hasn't had that many pro fights. I believe he's only had like eight pro fights. and But he has a huge amount of amateur experience. So he's been fighting in the amateurs and he's been a, he's a former Olympian. He's been out there fighting for like at least 13 years or so. All right. Um, 32 years old against the 29-year-old Fabio Worley. And look, man, it's the way I look at this fight here, you know, you got a guy with a lot of amateur experiences, been in there with all of the top pros that's been fighting pro for a while now. Um, some of those fights are on YouTube if you haven't seen them. Uh, the thing about Frazier Clark is like he's sharp. Um, he has a good boxing IQ, you know, he's, he's sharp. He's solid. Um Nothing really stands out in particular, though. You know, um, eight wins, six knockouts against Dave Allens, Marius Wack, you know, Bogdan Denews. It's still a lot of questions that need to be answered about him. And even with all that amateur experience, you know, it's like even in the amateurs, you know, I've seen the knockouts. I've seen the standing you know, or the, yeah, I've seen the stock knockouts, you know, I, I've, I've seen, I've seen who he, who, who he's lost to in the amateurs, you know, and when we talk about the experience, yes, that is a lot of experience, but you gotta, you gotta make me wonder when you, you, you're fighting that long, you're fighting to a point where you could have won three gold medals or something, you know what I mean? It's like, why wait so long? All your peers are looking towards their, the end of their careers, you know, while you were still fighting there. Um, he fought for a very, very long time, you know, and now as a pro, it's like, okay, yes, he has the experience, but is he that much better now than what he was then? You know, I think, I think when you fight as an amateur for too long, sometimes you kind of stick to that style, you know, and um, again, he's sharp, he's a good fighter, but there's nothing that wows me about him. You know what I mean? It's like he has the tools to outbox Worley. So he does have a chance. I'm not completely dismissing his chancing, 
his chances. But I, I would rather take the guy that as a pro who don't have the amateur experience like you do, I would rather take that guy because he's fought better fighters, um, top contenders, you know what I mean? And he's looked better doing it, you know? And he's improving gradually with every fight. Again, I, I've probably seen him about at least 10 times. And even though he has some technical flaws and he doesn't have the greatest defense and stuff, I'm seeing the improvements improvements with, with every fight. You know, I can't really say the same about Clark. He has all that amateur experience. How is it transferred to the pros as far as what I've seen? It's like guys like Walk. I would I would expect you to just knock him out. Even Dave Allen. I know Dave Allen retired, but I I would have wanted to see him not because that's what I would expect from Fabio Wardley. And no, not everybody's a KO artist, but it's like I need something. I need more. You know, for me to pick Clark. You know, I think Clark can do it. Um, again, he has the boxing ability to do it. You know. He has a good jabs. He he feints. He he knows how to control distance and and measuring his his opponents with that lead hand. You know he's a big he's a big guy. He is a big guy. You know what I mean. He has solid okay power. Um, not much volume there. You know. Um, I wouldn't call him a dog. You know. I think he's. You know, when I watch a Joe Joyce fight in the amateurs, it's just like, yes, he went back and forth with him, but. You know, there was nothing that really made me feel like um, his transition to the pros would be a, an elite one. You know, and I don't know how far Fabio is going to go. All right, but one thing I, I can say about Fabio Wardley is that he's extremely explosive. He's fast. He's powerful. And once he gets pissed off, he turns into a different person. He's an animal. You know, and that is why I'm leaning towards him to win this fight and possibly even get a stoppage, you know, because in, unless you have him out, you can assassinate Gorman, you know, unless you have him completely out. Um, he's dangerous, you know, and he's going in there with bad intentions. You know, the guy seems like a pretty nice guy. Uh, the David Adelaide fight, you know, I think I got caught up in. The you know the, all the the stuff that was happening in the first face face off the fight and everything and just the trash talk of you know, David Allen uh, I was gonna say David Allen uh, David Adelaide had so much confidence in the face off it just it just seemed like I got I got caught up in it and he was all talk Fabio beat the hell out of him it wasn't a competitive fight it wasn't competitive at all you know and. Um, Fabio is legit, you know. He's 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 a killer in there, and he's improving with his boxing, you know. Um, especially against David Adelaide, you know, the amount of feints um, that Adelaide just kept biting on throughout the entire fight just goes to show like he's not just a, a madman. Like sometimes when I see him fight, uh, and I'm talking about Warley. Uh, when I see him fight in uh, Molina or even when he stopped Nate Gorman, you know what I mean? Like he, he fights like a madman. Sometimes I feel like, all right, there's opportunities for a, a good fighter. And you might see it in this fight to, you know, catch him in, in, in those opportunities where he's like lunging in a little bit or, you know, stepping in, charging in a little bit uh, too much. But I think he's shown, especially his last fight, that. He, he can have that patience and box you to a knockout. And this is why I'm leaning towards him because he can turn it into a different kind of fight. If he happens to be, and I think that Clark would need have, you know, Fabio's going to be coming. So it's not like Clark needs to find him. Clark can fight on the back foot. You know, look for those counter opportunities to come in or let, let Fabio come in and catch him with a good counter. You know, both of these guys, a lot of times, they both of their lead hands are low at times. and They're going to both be looking to counter and, and, and land the right cross. And there's going to be opportunities, you know, and I, I've seen it with Fabio. But, um, you know, how long is it going to continue working? Because Fabio is the type of guy that if you... You outboxing him a little bit. You catching him a little too much. 
he turns it into a dog fight. And I don't know if Clark is ready for that kind of fight because Clark hasn't fought anyone that was fast or powerful yet, you know, and that was still in their prime. He hasn't fought anybody like that as a pro, you know, and as an amateur. Yes, he's fought a lot of guys, but a lot of those guys that he fought in the amateurs, a lot of those top guys like a Joshua or Joyce, they had moved on in their pro careers much earlier than he did, and they became much better fighters. And he's lost to those guys in the amateur. So I don't, I don't know where to really go with him. It's like he has, he's a solid boxer, but for me to believe him, I would have to see it. He was gonna have to prove it to me this weekend. So it's a good fight. Uh, I can't wait to go. Um, where is this fight in? I, I don't pay for tickets. I know. Um, it is in O2. So this will be my first fight going to the O2. Haven't been to the O2 yet. You know, I, you know, I, I went out there last year to see Yard fight better BF, but that was in the Wembley arena, not the stadium, the arena right next to it. So, um, you know, I know when I went last year, everybody was telling me, yo, you know, I was so amped up for that fight last year. Everybody was telling me like, oh, Yo, this is this is nice, but wait till you you ain't even been to the old two yet, or you ain't even been to the Wembley Stadium yet. You know, it's crazy. It's been that. So, I mean, even though this is not a big major fight, um, I'm looking forward to go to the O2, you know, and, and, and in even more times in the future. Like I said, I, I've made friends out there and um I'm comfortable in getting my way around. Like I, I normally go solo. This is the first time I, I won't be going by myself, so um, you know, if you are a New Yorker, it's very easy to get around London. I believe it's very similar than, uh, uh, to, to here, uh, but not as, it's not as like big, you know, New York City, the subway system is crazy. I know they call it the tube out there, but the subway system of New York is, is much bigger and deeper. There's so many different trains. And I think it's simple if you have Google maps to get around out in London. So I, I can't look, I can't wait to go out there um, and I'll be at the fight. So um, uh, check me out if you're out there, if you see me, run into me, uh, say what's up. All right, um, so yeah, I'll see you guys out there um, when I land. Uh, definitely bring in my MacBook and I'll be making content while I'm out there like I normally do. And I'll see you guys when I touch down. All right, y'all have a good one. Peace.